The Katyusha rocket launcher has developed as a symbol of Soviet military power since the weapon's success during World War II. The ability to unleash devastating amounts of rockets on an enemy has inspired awe and terror in viewers. But just how did this technology develop, and why was it so successful? The development of rocket weaponry in the Soviet Union was spearheaded by the Gas Dynamics Laboratory in Moscow. Later, a successor organization, the Reactive Scientific Research Institute, took over the research. During the interwar years, this organization developed rockets for aerial combat and rockets that assisted planes when taking off. Pertaining to the Katyusha though, Soviet development of ground-based rocket artillery began in the summer of 1938. When development of the Katyusha rocket launcher system began, the rocket launchers were first mounted sideways on the trucks, but this proved to be a very unstable arrangement, and the launchers were instead mounted lengthwise with the truck. Testing continued for the next couple of years, and the system was still in a partially experimental phase by the time of Operation Barbarossa in June 1941. Before the war, Soviet military officials were skeptical of the new rocket technology, namely due to the shorter range and longer reload of the rockets compared to modern howitzers. Indeed, some Soviet howitzers had nearly 1.5 times or double the range of the rockets, and howitzers could fire about five times as fast over a long period of time. Not only this, but early rocket weapons were considerably more difficult to aim than traditional artillery. Consequently, rocket weapons were a low priority for the Soviets before the war. In fact, the Red Army was only equipped with roughly 40 rocket trucks by June 1941. However, the importance of rockets for the Soviets began to change after early successes of the Katyushas against the German invaders in the summer of 1941. Over the course of the war, multiple Katyusha types were developed. The BM-13 became the most common type of Katyusha, and it could hold 16 to 48 132mm rockets with an 11 pound warhead. A lighter variant, the BM-8, had 81 millimeter rockets with a 1.4 pound warhead, and a heavy variant, the BM-31, had 310 millimeter rockets with a 64 pound warhead. Rocket launchers were experimentally installed on some tank chassis such as the KV-1 heavy tank, T-40 light tank, and T-60 light tank. Not many armored rocket systems were manufactured because tanks were needed for the front line instead. Designers also experimented with artillery tractors, armored trains, and naval vessels. By the time of the German invasion in June 1941, the rocket launcher was at the end of its testing phase and almost ready for combat use. By July of 1941, the first Katyusha trucks were delivered to the front lines and they started to arrive to the front in sizable numbers by August. They were first deployed in the area near Smolensk. One notable engagement took place just east of the Belarusian city of Orsha in mid-July 1941. They bombarded the German forces that had recently captured Orsha and destroyed numerous German trains and inflicted many casualties. Later, Katyushas bombarded the captured city of Rudnya and destroyed numerous tanks and trucks. Aside from the obvious physical damage the Katyushas could inflict, there was a significant element of psychological warfare as well. The loud hissing sounds that the rockets made when fired and the sheer destructiveness of the weapon instilled terror in the Germans. For their part, the Soviets named the weapon after a popular wartime song, Katyusha. On the other hand, the Germans nicknamed it Stalin's organ due to the loud wailing sound that the rockets made when fired. The Katyusha was by far less accurate than traditional howitzers, but they were capable of bombarding an impressively large area. It was never the original intention of the weapon to have pinpoint accuracy. Rather, destruction across a vast area was preferred. In this way, Katyushas had the potential to cause more destruction than howitzers. Katyushas could fire all of their rockets upon an area within just a few seconds, whereas howitzers could provide slower, sustained fire for a lengthy amount of time. Within five minutes, 
A Katyusha brigade could fire as many as 1,000 rockets in a half square mile area. With this in mind, the Katyusha's primary role was to relentlessly bombard and break a concentrated area of the German front line and then allow infantry and tanks to advance through the breakthrough. Another advantage of the Katyusha was its mobility. Because the rockets were harnessed onto trucks, these trucks could withdraw from an area after unleashing their ordnance in a tactic known as shoot and scoot. In terms of personnel, six crew members were assigned to each truck. Additionally, four rocket trucks, two ammo trucks, and two repair trucks accompanied each Katyusha battery. Now, after seeing early battlefield successes, Soviet commanders and theorists cast aside their previous doubts about the Katyusha's effectiveness and began investing more resources into its production. Also, plenty of heavy trucks were available, and the most commonly used ones were the ZIS-5, ZIS-5V, and the ZIS-6. They were also not as laborious to produce compared to the howitzers. At the same time, improvements had been made in the timeliness of the reloading process, the accuracy, and firing range, making the Katyusha even more appealing. In fact, the M13 variant, with a 132mm rocket, could fire up to 5.4 miles. By December 1941, the Red Army had 500 launchers. By the end of 1942, a bit over 3,000 had been built, and over 10,000 had been built by the time the war ended in 1945. For comparison, the Soviets manufactured half a million artillery pieces from 1941 to 1945. At the same time, the American Lend-Lease program was critical to the success of the Katyushas. Indeed, American Studebaker trucks were highly valued for their mechanical reliability and great off-road performance. Nearly 2,000 American trucks carried the rocket systems, especially Katyushas made from 1943 to 1945. Because the Katyushas were so highly valued, NKVD Soviet secret police units were assigned to Katyusha batteries to maintain security. Whenever a Katyusha was disabled and unable to withdraw to safety, Soviet forces intentionally destroyed them to prevent the Germans from capturing them and gaining intel on rocket technology. Local commanders were responsible for preventing the weapons from falling into enemy hands, and they often had to risk their lives to ensure their successful sabotage. The Katyushas were so effective that Germany accelerated its own rocket weapon technology in response. They enhanced the development of the Nebelwerfe, which could fire 150mm rockets. Similarly to the Katyusha, the Nebelwerfe was inaccurate but provided immense firepower over a sizable area, and it was relatively easy to transport compared to traditional howitzers. But even since the end of World War II, the Katyusha's legacy has been substantial. During the Cold War, Katyushas were exported to Warsaw Pact nations, North Korea, China, and Vietnam. China used Katyushas during their intervention in the Korean War, and Viet Minh forces used them against the French during their fight for independence during the First Indochina War. Iraq had also purchased a number of Katyusha trucks and employed them during the First and Second Gulf Wars. The Soviets also made numerous advancements in rocket technology during the Cold War, and they manufactured the BM-14 launcher with 140mm rockets and the BM-24 launcher with 240mm rockets. Since then, these have evolved into modern combat rocket launching systems that continue to be used today. The Katyusha rocket system proved to be an exceptionally powerful weapon. With sheer destructive potential and psychological impact, the Katyusha inspired fear in the Germans and was shown to be capable of tearing holes in enemy lines across a vast area to allow massive Soviet breakthroughs. With excellent mobility, firepower, and range, the Katyusha inspired many weapon systems developed during the Cold War and after.